Wow. So moving. Thank you. So now to hear some more about it and about the work she's doing in preserving and enhancing this legacy, Joy Grisham is successor executor to the estate of Lorraine Hansberry and literary trustee. She oversees the licensing of Hansberry's work and serves as editor for print editions of her writings. Ms. Gresham was associate producer of the 2014 Tony Award winning production of A Raisin in the Sun starring Denzel Washington and has worked with the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, the Goodman Theatre and the National Theatre in London on other Hansberry projects. Her career spans 40 years as a dancer, choreographer and arts editor. Joy is the daughter of the late Jewel Gresham Nimeroff and the late Robert Nimeroff, who was Hansbury's former literary executor. Please welcome Joy Gresham. Hello. Hello. Did you enjoy the documentary? Yes. Beautiful. Powerful. Powerful. We're very, very moved to hear that it's been nominated for an Emmy. So. So I want to start by drawing my connection to Lorraine. Um, as, was, as I was described, I am the successor executor of her estate, following my father, Robert Nimeroff, who was chosen by Lorraine as the person she most trusted with her words and her unfinished works. At his death in 1991, incidentally dying from the same cancer Lorraine died from. He chose my mother, Jewel Gresham Nimeroff, who dedicated herself to finishing the work. And at her death in 2005, I chose Lorraine. I am the executive director of the Lorraine Hansberry Literary Trust whose mission is to give access to Lorraine and to curate her legacy. I am here to represent or talk about the living legacy of Lorraine Hansberry, whose words and visions have never died, have never retired, have never expired. In fact, we now know that her words have taken on new life and new meaning every day. Her plays are in constant production nationally and internationally. Her print works are in steady demand, as are the audio collections of her plays, speeches, and public talks. Licensed requests come in day after day, as, do, as is the increasing interest in her papers and her archives at the Schomburg Center at the New York Public Library. In addition to this documentary, three new print biographies are due to be published in the next year about Lorraine, the first since her death. I am at work bringing four of her lesser known plays to Broadway to great popular demand. This is what a living legacy looks like. This is also what a creative radical looks like. Lorraine is an artist, public intellectual, activist, and writer, shoulder to shoulder. And if you can stand back a minute from this powerful documentary and biographical treatment of her life, when thinking of Lorraine, it's a mistake to think only of her as an exceptional talent, as a part of a special intellectual elite, as someone whose extraordinary gifts set her apart. On another note, it is also a mistake to only think of Lorraine as someone who died before she had the opportunity to leave her mark. And while much of this is what understandably comes to mind for all of you, it is not the identity Lorraine chose for herself. 
She was part of a long radical tradition. She was a descendant of movements, multiple movements. She was a student of mentors 30 to 50 years her senior. Did someone say Paul Robeson, W.B. Du Bois? She only wanted to follow and learn from these great minds. She joined the youth chapter of the Communist Party when she was at the University of Wisconsin in 1948. She was attracted to the communist notion of a black nation in the <laughs> southern United States that encouraged the right of self-determination, the development of racial pride, and black leadership. This anticipates, of course, the black power movement of the 1960s. Lorraine was involved in movements, historical movements, that oppose colonialism, racial discrimination, nuclear weapons, poverty, women's oppression, the Cold War, and violence in general. She dedicated herself to peace and freedom. Freedom being a term that she later replaced with the term liberation because it applied to the entire world, liberation movements. And if you bear with me, I want to read from a quote that, uh, that I'm really um, very held by. This is uh, uh, from a, a wonderful piece by a uh, scholar named Robbie Lieberman called Measure Them Right, Lorraine Hansberry and the Struggle for Peace. The quote is, she sought to make the United States live up to its promise as a land of freedom and democracy. Thus, in a 1960 letter, she wrote about the US as, and this is Lorraine, a great nation with beautiful, certain beautiful and indestructible traditions and potentials, which can be seized by all of us who possess imagination and love of man. There is a great deal to be fought in America, but at the same time, there is so much which begs to be but reaffirmed and cherished with sweet defiance. Vulgarity, blind conformity, and mass lethargy need not triumph in the land of Lincoln and Frederick Douglass and Walt Whitman and Mark Twain. There is simply no reason why dreams should dry up like raisins or prunes or anything else in America. If you will permit me to say so, I believe that we can impose beauty on our future. As compared to looking to others for change, Lorraine's choice was to dedicate herself, her life, to do the work, one's own work, to be able to commit. I think Sister Lorraine, like Sister Harriet Tubman, is our conductor. Our conductor on the Underground Railroad, a guide toward freedom, with a specialty in leading us through the intersections. Her purpose was to get us on our way to live our freedom. I am here to encourage you to claim her legacy as your own, to meet that loving challenge. Thank you. Can we do a few questions? Um, I would be so sad if I couldn't answer some questions. So I'm just wondering if there maybe are one or two that we can speak to. David. The microphone is coming. That's where. Hello, I'm David Greer. Thank you for this film and the film festival for presenting it. I was very moved. Uh,
just I happen to be I helped uh, produce a few shows on Broadway uh, several years ago and I saw a play called Jimmy and Lorraine I was wondering is that something that the state supports it's a story about you know James Baldwin and Lorraine and their friendship and relationship um, the the uh, state did not contribute at all or endorse that play no <laughs> good evening Hi, I'm Yvonne Medley, and I'm the founder of a nonprofit, the Life Journeys Writers Guild in Southern Maryland. And we look at and talk about a raisin in the sun all the time. We have for years now. I wondered if you can answer this question. We have this little debate going on. The uh, <laughs> the point of view in A Raisin in the Sun. Um, sometimes we feel it's the, the son, sometimes we feel it's the mother's story. And uh, we've heard some folklore about that, about the give and take uh, of, of uh, Sidney Poitier and the, the, the wonderful actress who played the mother. You, can you comment on that? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of the greatest uh, Living legends about the about the play, um, and it's also, I think, um, a critical um, debate about the play in terms of whose story is it, who is the hero of it, and in fact, it's a it's a theme, it's a debate that Lorraine had with herself. She she in fact um, in a, a piece that she wrote for the Village Voice in 1959 felt that that was a flaw of the play, that it didn't have a central hero. Um, and um, I, I agree with you, I, I disagree with her. <laughs> but um, that was something she really uh, struggled with. At the same time, I can say uh, with certainty, looking back, that Lorraine is, um, is celebrated for her characters, her spectrum of characters, the way in which she can bring a group, a family, um, a, a, a group of committed individuals together into a difficult situation, a difficult problem. Uh, this happens in each of her plays. She draws incredibly full and deep and complicated uh, characters, each of whom she loves and she respects. So I think she changes the paradigm so that it is no longer necessary to have a singular hero. But in fact, each of those characters are powerful because they step into the heroic moment, the her heroic calling of their lives. And um, I think that's what makes her an extraordinary writer in that sense. Yes. Good afternoon. I'm Good afternoon. Cynthia Robbins, and I am just so filled and grateful for this extraordinary film and for all the work you're doing. And the last thing that you, you said, which is not at all what I wanted to talk about, but the, the fact of her capacity to really recognize and, and inspire the heroism in all of us is, I think, what came through so strongly through this presentation uh, and the courage to be honest. Um, and I wonder, particularly about the making of the film, and I was trying to sort of place the chronology with your stepping into your role. Um, the film is magical in its capacity to feel like a feature almost, because, or like she was part of the making of the film. Uh, and it was brilliantly yeah. done. And so if you could speak any at, at all about the filmmaking technique, uh, this is great documentary storytelling. Thank you for your work. Um, that's a wonderful question. Um, I can only take a stab at answering it. Um, I wish Tracy was here to talk about it. Um, the, I guess my response is to say a little bit about my role in the film. Um, 
I was involved in the um, film primarily as a licensor, which um, in some ways limited my role, but mostly it managed my role and helped to make it possible because I was responsible for li licensing all the uses of Lorraine's image and words in the film. And in a documentary, that's an enormous task. And so my goal um, and the important thing to me was to let Lorraine speak in her own words. So it was very important um, to me, and in fact, it was something that only came to form late in the production, to bring all those home movies into the documentary, because there's very little footage of Lorraine. Um, and the most powerful thing, which really impacted me when I was a tiny girl, and my mother married my father and I moved into Lorraine's home, and I heard her voice, and I saw her image, and I just remember like growing three inches because I had never experienced that kind of human being before. And um, I knew that that had to, that you all had to experience that. So the idea was to bring Lorraine into it so that she was really powerful. Um, and she um, could do what only she can do, which is to speak for herself. So that's partly. Um, and um, uh, just one other thing behind that. Um, what struck me so much about um, the documentary on Jimmy and the documentary on Nina is Lorraine. <laughs> Especially um, the documentary on, on, um, on Jimmy, I feel that Lorraine in so many, so many ways is like the star of the, the documentary. The, the, partly because um, of, of Jimmy's love for Lorraine and their friendship and their respect of one another. And when he speaks of Lorraine, um, something very intimate and very powerful happens in that documentary for me. Um, and the same thing in some ways happens in um, What Happened, Miss Simone, when she talks about Lorraine and um, what Lorraine challenged in her, what she learned from Lorraine. So um, I, it wasn't just me, but after that, I talked with a lot of friends about those two films, and they said a similar thing. So I wanted that to be really clear in this documentary. So that's, um, that was a decision between myself and the filmmakers to, to make use of all that footage. As raw as some of it is, it's very powerful. If I may add something that would which I like to do, connect other films we've had during the festival with the one that we're viewing now. On Friday night, we showed a documentary on Oscar Zeta Lacoste, who was a Chicano activist and lawyer in the uh, 60s and 70s on the West Coast. And the filmmaker used a device where he had actors portraying the main characters along with the documentary footage and uh, photographs. And uh, the actors were of the characters while at, at the time of their lives. What he wanted to get away from was the usual Ken Burns, older person talking about somebody in the past, the slow pan across the photograph, and then the zoom. And so he animated it with, he, he livened up the film with animation and with effects, and then with these actors interspersed, so the voices of um, Anika doing her own voice. And then the narration with, that was Latonya Jackson? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Really, I think, I, I agree with you, brings it to life in a way that makes it feel as though they are alive now. Mm -hmm. We have one more, we have time for one more. Gentleman in the back. For your trusteeship. My name is Amos Jones, and this is a biographical question. Could you elaborate on what Lorraine maybe theorized about the death of her father in Mexico City? The film says she didn't think it was. In the documentary, it was stated that she had doubts mm -hmm. uh, about the official story behind that. And 
I do too. You would have to follow Lorraine's uh, comments about who her father was and um, who he represented in the city of Chicago in terms of um, civic power, civic democracy, who he was as an activist, uh, what their, uh, their family home was like in terms of it serving as a setting for great debate and great discourse um, and great um, sharing of, um, of celebrities and artists and writers and politicians who would come through Chicago. Um, she thought her father was the greatest of men. And so she believes that following um, the uh, case of um, uh, that went to the Supreme Court where they challenged the restricted covenants in Chicago that uh, after losing the second round of those those uh, hearings of, the, of that case that her father was forced into exile and that um, that it killed him and she's very, like everything else, very articulate, very descriptive about it. Um, and it's something that, that crops up in her, in her writings. Um, you might find some of it in um, To Be Young, Gifted, and Black in some of her uh, journal entries. Um, I wish I could tell you more about where to look. But um, stay tuned for the upcoming biographies, because they're going to talk about Carl Hansberry. Thank you again, Joy. Thank you. Thank you. Forward. So to lead us in our incantation, we're asking Atila and Brother Salim to come forth again and uh, help us close out the afternoon in a way we think and hope Lorraine would love. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to do, um, as the Sysasar said, uh, 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 an invocation and evocation and chanting and celebration of that name. So I'm just going to ask you if you can to stand. And we're going to do two things that may seem like they're diametrically opposed, but they're not. So we're going to take one moment just to breathe in deeply. And exhale. Again, inhale. And exhale. And we're going to take just a moment of silence and then a moment of joyful, I'll say noise, music, celebration, air, life for Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. You know, Vivian comes from the Latin root of vivir, to live. And so we're going to bring her our life as we chant. And we're going to take just one moment to think about it, to reflect on everything we've seen, the things we've learned on this powerful, powerful film and on the powerful people that you are to make some change in the world we live in now. So we're going to take just one moment, and then I'm going to start a chant, and it's going to be call and response for a moment. And then we're going to all end up chanting Lorraine's name, OK? So let's take a moment. OK, and what is her name? I, I really didn't hear you. I'm hard of hearing. I'm so sorry. Let's start it again. Good. So now you're going to repeat after me for a moment. You got a little rhythm in your body. You can move. You can rock. You can sway. You can clap. You can, you can definitely smile. That you can do. Okay? So Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. Let me hear you. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. Your turn. My turn. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. You're a vital part of our history. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. No, no, no. You're repeating. Aha. Uh -huh. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. Lorraine Vivian You're a vital part of our history. You're a vital part of our history. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. Lorraine 
and writing for our dignity. Fighting and writing for our dignity. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. Championing not one but humanity. Championing not one but humanity. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. We celebrate perpetuate your legacy. We celebrate perpetuate your legacy. Can't hear you now. Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. For then, for now, and posterity. Lorraine, Vivian, Hansberry. You're a vital part of our history. Lorraine, Vivian, Hansberry. We celebrate, perpetuate your legacy. Her name's Lorraine, Vivian Hansberry. Lorraine, Vivian Hansberry. Lorraine, Vivian Hansberry. Again, Lorraine. Come on, louder, louder. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you, sister. All right. Thank you for coming. Remember that name.